Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie Lloyd. I'm the Education and Development Coordinator here at the Hudgens Center for Art and Learning. And welcome to another installation of our Passport Adventures in Art virtual summer camp. So thank you for joining me. We're gonna be doing another little demonstration of how to make a fantastic piece of artwork using uh, some new mediums perhaps, new techniques maybe you haven't experienced before, and also uh, learn a little bit about a different culture or a different part of the world or an artist from a different part of the world. Hence the name Passport Adventures. Uh, so to start with, without any further ado, let me show you the supplies that you're gonna need. So, this is the painting. First of all, we're going to be doing our own rendition of Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. So this isn't an exact replica. This is sort of our version, our practice version, just to catch the style of, uh, of Van Gogh's work. Vincent Van Gogh was a post-impressionist style painter. Uh, he, impressionistic basically means you're, you're just catching the impression. It's not a photorealistic painting. It's more uh, just to catch the vibe of what you're looking at. So the supplies you're gonna need, I've got a cup of water here to rinse out your brush. You can use any type of cup. I have here a canvas panel. This is just a thin eight inch by 10 inch canvas panel. I also have an easel that I'm working with. An easel is optional. You can also paint your picture just flat on, the, on you know, a table surface like that. We also have a couple of palettes. Now, the colors you're gonna be needing are blue, which you can see I had a bit of a, a blue explosion here. So any type of blue, and by the way, this is acrylic paint. So not oil, not watercolor, but acrylic paint. So blue, you're gonna need green, sort of a rich, deep green. We've also got some light orange. You can use any shade of orange, really. I just picked sort of like a lighter pumpkin color. You're gonna need some yellow. Again, any shade of yellow you like. We've got black and we've got white. Now I have a, an empty palette here. We're also gonna be doing some paint mixing. So I'll tell you when we're gonna to need to mix that paint and what colors exactly you're gonna to wanna to mix. So it's sometimes nice to have a, a, a main palette with all your colors and then one for, for mixing. I've also got some paper towels just in case things get messy or you need to wipe your brushes off. And last but not least, our brushes. You're gonna need two today. I've got sort of a, a medium brush, you know, not humongous, but sort of a, a medium thickness, and then one that's a little smaller for some of those finer details. So you'll, we'll be able to do everything we need with these two brushes here. All right, friends, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need is your big brush. Go ahead and dip it in your water, get it nice and wet, and you're gonna dip it in some blue. So just kind of load it up with that blue color. The very first thing we're gonna do is make a horizon line. And what I mean by that is we're gonna draw the line here, you'll see what I mean, and we're gonna fill in the sky with this blue color first, and then we're gonna paint green on the bottom. Just the very first step. So, you don't want it to be too high up, you know, you're not going halfway up the page, maybe just a couple inches, and you're just gonna start with your very first wiggly horizon line. That's it. I just did it real fast. It's gonna be, the bottom part is gonna be this green part, and then we're gonna fill in blue all the way to start. So once you've made this horizon line, leave this bottom part white, and go ahead and fill in the entire, <laughs> entire top part blue. So from here up, you're gonna fill that all the way in blue. All right, and boom, that's what I mean. So that bottom part is gonna be green, but first we just focused on filling in the sky with that blue color. Oops, sorry about that. So now what we wanna do is rinse out that brush real good. You'll notice it's got a lot of blue paint on it still, so give it a good rinse. You can kind of wipe it off on your, on your paper towel there, and go ahead and let's load it up with some green. Good, so you got some green paint, and go ahead and start filling in the bottom, this whole bottom part. Go ahead and make it green. All right, and that's what I mean by that. So we've got the whole bottom part filled in. Go ahead and rinse out your brush again real good. And now this is where we're gonna get into our very first paint mixing. So we're gonna make a light blue. So go ahead and grab a scoop of that dark blue. Oops, let me grab my other little palette over here. So you're gonna do a scoop of dark blue and a little scoop of white. And so you're gonna go ahead and mix that into a nice light blue color. We're gonna make that light blue section 
right here, this hill. And don't worry about all those little hash marks. We're gonna get to those later. We're just blocking in the main colors. So we're still, still sticking with our big brush. Again, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of impressionistic painting is it doesn't have to be photorealistic. It can be a little wild, a little crazy. So once you've got a nice shade of light blue that you like, you're gonna go up a couple inches, not too high. You don't want it to be a huge hill. Remember, you wanna have a lot of sky to work with. So just an inch or two, and go ahead and make a nice sloping hill that kind of meets right there. Great, and it's you know about halfway. Some of your hills might come a little longer, but you want it to be about halfway or even a little shorter. So mine's, mine's roughly halfway. And once you've got that, go ahead and just very carefully try to block that in and fill in that hill, that light blue hill. And it's okay, again, if you've got some of your colors blending together, don't worry about it. We're gonna, you know, it adds to the beauty of that impressionistic style. Okay, and go ahead and rinse out your brush again. All right, and once you've rinsed out your brush real good again, we're gonna do another paint mixing. Uh, it's gonna be a little different than, than what I've got going on here. We're gonna do this back hill, this dark, like mountain range, hill range in the background here. So we want it to stand out a little from the blue of our, of our sky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix blue and green together. So you're gonna get a little scoop of that blue color. Go ahead and pick another spot to mix that paint. And a scoop of that green color. And mix that together until you get like a dark teal. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little wild. It can be a little rugged looking. Uh, and we're gonna add some details later. So this is just blocking out the basics. Once you've got some blue green, we're gonna go ahead and do that mountain range. So again, I'm gonna start just an inch or two above that light blue hill that you made and go ahead and just drag that across. You don't want it to be too high because you do, you wanna have a lot of sky to work with here, but something like that. And once you've done that, go ahead and just fill it in. Okay, friends, we've got our mountain ranges and our hills. We're gonna start working on the sky. So go ahead and rinse out your brush real good again. Go ahead and dab it off on your paper towel. Oopsie, you still got some extra color there. Good. You want it to be, you know, pretty cleaned off. We're gonna move back to our light blue. So now we're gonna get started on some of the swirly elements of our sky. We're gonna do this sort of starscape and our swirly swirls. So we're gonna switch back to that light blue color. Now if you, looks like, you know, it looks like I need a little bit more. Cool, let's go ahead and just scoop a little bit of blue. Scoop a little bit of white. And kind of mix those two together until you get a nice pale blue that you think is pretty. And again, this is totally up to you. Everyone's painting is gonna be a little different, which is great. So yeah, that looks pretty to me. So a nice light blue color. Now again, I'm still with my kind of medium thick brush. So, you know, if you're having a hard time controlling the paint on a big brush, you can switch to your small brush. But I find it helps to, instead of painting this way for details, sometimes it helps to paint that way using the, the skinny end of the brush. So what I mean by that is go ahead and see if you can just do a line up above your hills. All right, and what I did was basically that line there. All right, and so you still got some room for your swirls up above. So there's two main swirls in this painting, and if you look at pictures of Van Gogh's original, you've got like a bottom star sweep and two big swirls. So go ahead and just watch me first. I'm gonna start with my big swirl, which starts fairly close to the top of the canvas, and it comes around loops around like that, okay? And you see it's not perfect, it's kind of a little messy. We'll clean that up later. And then that other swirl kind of swoops from there and swoops around like that. All right, so again, it's not perfect, but that's a great start. So go ahead and start with something like that and you can kind of fill it in, make it a little thicker if you want. You know, and if you mess up, like, ooh, let's say you did that, what, what I just did, maybe it's too thick right there. Don't even sweat it. We're gonna go in with some details and kind of clean that up. 
So don't freak out if it's not perfectly perfect right now. That's the beauty of painting is paint dries and you can paint right over it. So go ahead and just do your best with some swirly swirls just like that. And once you've got those swirls, you also wanna, don't forget about this bottom part. You're gonna fill that in with the light blue. And again, it's okay if those colors blend together a little bit. That's part of the beauty of this kind of impressionistic style. Okay, friends, you're making great progress. It's starting to come together. We are gonna switch gears and switch to our small brush. We're gonna switch to our small brush, get it wet in that cup of water you got there. We're gonna work on some details of our sky. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and dip it in that yellow paint. Now, if it starts looking kinda of green, uh-oh, that's all right. Wipe off your brush, rinse it out some more. But when you're ready and you've got some nice yellow on your brush, we're going to block out where we want our moon to be. So, you know, ideally we leave a nice big area to do a big old circle. Now on this particular painting of mine, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but that's okay. And you know what else is gonna help too is if you put a little bit of white, probably should have said that first. Oh yeah, look at that, look how much brighter that is. So if you add a little bit of white to your yellow, so you've got that nice pale buttery yellow. Let's add a few spots where we want our stars to be. Now they don't have to be exactly like mine. You can add them kind of wherever you want them to be. And right there, and notice they're not perfect circles, they're not exact, but just the gist. And again, you'll see we've got a lot of these little light marks, these little hash marks all around. They're gonna add to the detail, all right. So while you still have your small brush with yellow paint, that white yellow paint, let's stick with it. So we're gonna add some of those hash marks there. So go ahead and load it up. You can mix some more if you need to. Just get a little on your brush there. And we're gonna add some of these hash marks that go all the way around the swirls, around the starlight, down here in this band of starlight. So it's really just a little dash mark. You just kinda wanna, like parentheses, dash, 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 all the way around. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You want a light touch. You don't want it to be too heavy-handed. But these little dash marks, just like parentheses, all the way around. Yes. Dash, 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 all the way around. Now, this isn't the only color we're gonna be adding. We're gonna be adding lots of different colors. So they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to all be in the lines either. They really can be random, as long as they're just following the general pattern of your swirls. Dash, 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 dash. Really random, really free, really loosey-goosey. They don't have to be perfect. And for some of you, if you're a perfectionist, this might be kind of challenging to really let go and challenge yourself to let it not be perfect. So once you've rinsed out your small brush real well, we're going to switch back to that light blue, that same light blue that we've been working with. You can go ahead and make a little more if you need to. Go ahead and load up your brush with some light blue, and we're gonna be doing those same dash marks. All right, and we're gonna add them to our existing swirls and also our hills. So same exact thing, add some dash, dash, dash marks all the way around. Same thing, sticking with that light blue color that we were working with, we're gonna add these kind of hash marks. Now they're a little on the diagonal. We've been working with kind of these horizontal shapes. We're gonna work on a slight diagonal, just kind of change up the texture. So on this hill here, you're gonna to wanna to just do some diagonal dash marks, okay? Adding some movement. Now we're gonna add some detail to this. So we've already been working with light blue. That is already a light blue. So go ahead and just Scoop up some white paint here. I've just got some white with just a hint of blue. So you don't have to do too much. You'll notice it already is turning like just a very, very pale blue, even paler blue than this color here. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. Add some dash marks to this hill. All right, so we're adding some extra detail. Now we're gonna add some detail to this bottom part, same thing. So you'll notice 
it's a light green. So again, you don't really have to do too much. Scoop up some of that white. And you'll notice I've got some blue in my paint. That's okay. If you've got a little blue on your white paint, not a big deal, because watch what happens. So you see you've got this really kind of pale, pale blue color I've been working with. I'm gonna scoop up just a tiny touch of green. We're gonna mix it in there, and look what you got. A pale, pale green. So you're gonna go ahead and just add some detail, add some horizontal dash, dash, dash marks with that pale green, just like we've been doing. So you can see it's already coming together. It's already starting to look like our painting here. So we're gonna rinse our brush out and switch back to the sky. We're gonna switch back to our sky. So go ahead and rinse out that brush real good. All right, once you've rinsed out your brush real, really well, we're gonna switch back to our blue. And you guys have been doing great. I know it's a lot of mixing paint and rinsing brushes and mixing a different color. But that's the fun of painting. This is kind of an advanced one. But feel free to rewind and re-listen to something I've said or slow it down, watch it again. But we're sticking to our same dash, dash, dash marks. Now we've got the same color as the sky that we originally started with. So you'll notice there are some blue dash marks in our swirls and in the bottom here. So we're gonna add some more of those blue dash marks. So with that original blue color, you're just adding a little extra, little extra depth, a little extra movement to that swirl. Same thing down here, we're adding just a little extra depth. Dash, dash, dash. A little extra movement, a little extra texture. Okay, and that's really it. it doesn't have to be too much. So once you've rinsed out your brush really well, go ahead and load it up with some of that orange. And again, I've got kind of a lighter kind of pumpkin orange, but you can use whatever shade of orange you have, whatever you like. Now let's start with our moon. You'll notice it's a crescent moon. It's sort of a half moon. So you're doing like kind of a letter C. So just focus on doing a letter C, and if you need to get, you know, I'm bracing my canvas here with my pinky finger, you're using your small brush, you're gonna follow the curve of that moon, and you might need to go over it a couple times for it to really show up. Okay. Sometimes. Now your stars is very easy, it's just a little dot, a little orange dot right in the middle, dot. And so now we're gonna keep adding, we're gonna stick with that orange, keep that orange paint right on your brush, and we're gonna do the same thing in our swirls, those dash, dash, dash marks and around the starlight in our sky. So go ahead and just start adding some little dash, dash, dash details. Now, and you can start fresh. Dash, dash, dash. Reload. You can reload that fresh paint as many times as you need. But I'm just going around the yellow, adding some more depth, some more glow to our sky. Don't forget this bottom part here. You kind of want to fill in some of that negative space. All right, so it's, you know, it's our version. It's our quick demo impressionistic version of Starry Night. In the original painting, there was a little village down here. We're not going to worry about doing the village. We're just kind of getting a handle on that impressionistic, quick style of painting. All right, once you've rinsed out your brush, Go ahead and stick with that small brush, that same little brush we've been using, and go ahead and load it up with some black paint. Now you'll see that our tree starts at the very, very bottom and goes pretty much all the way up to the very tippy top of our canvas. And it's got like some wiggly parts and some weird little branches. So you can make it any shape that you like. Go ahead and start with that basic shape though. You're gonna wanna keep it kind of on the left-hand side of your picture. And better to start small, you can always make it bigger, but go ahead and just kind of draw a basic shape, maybe with one wiggle. Maybe you wiggle it up a different way. And it's not gonna, everyone's is gonna be, you know, not exactly the same. This painting that I'm making here isn't even the same as the original one I made. And that's the beauty of painting is it, it's ever-changing, it's always different. 
down like that. All right, you can kind of clean up the little spikes. And so once you've got your basic shape, go ahead and fill it in. So fill in the whole middle part. All right, and so you've got your whole plant tree thing completely filled in with black paint. You'll notice I've added some last little details of green right in there. So if you wanna wait a few minutes for it to dry, it's gonna make that green show up a little easier. But if you wanna go ahead and just knock it out and see what happens, we're gonna stick with our small brush. I'm gonna load it up with some of that green paint. And again, it's that dash, 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 except this time we're gonna go up and down, vertical dash marks. So not side to side, up and down. So whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and just all right, and that's it. This is sort of our version. So you just are adding a couple details to your plant. Now this is a great time for you to add any finishing touches. If you, add, if you want to add more orange, if you want to add more white, you know, whatever you want to add. And the most important thing at the end of creating your painting, oh, maybe I want to fill in my, my moon a little bit. Boom, okay, now I'm done. The very most important thing to do at the end of your masterpiece is add your signature. So great job, everybody. This is our quick passport adventures in art summer camp. Uh, Vincent van Gogh, the famous Dutch post-impressionistic painter, uh, our version of his Starry Night. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Happy painting.